So let's start with tab notes, introduction, slides. So yeah, this is the TLDR. What we want is to achieve uh, true decentralization. So we want to make it uh, as easy as we can. So everyone can run a node at home and in the easiest way possible. But yeah, it's not also for, for users. It's also a tool for developers right now because you know, many services that we are running are actually used by developers. So here we have the situation we want to avoid on the left. You know, I mean, a lot of people using decentralized networks, but in a centralized manner. So we have one bottleneck. And what we want to achieve is the situation in the right. So uh, you have a node and you share it with, with your friends or your coworkers or the other devs and everything is totally distributed and we don't have uh, centralized uh, bottlenecks. So this is what we do. We install Dubnode software into boxes, like small computers, but you can actually run it on any server or, but we encourage people to run their, their own nodes at, at home. So what is Dubnode basically is uh, basically, well, Right here, we have the Ubuntu logo, but right now we, we move to, to Debian. And it's running Docker on top. And we, what we do is we run uh, several applications on top, like eight of them. Like, you know, VPN, the resolver, etc. And right now I'm going to describe a little bit uh, every, every container that you have. So VPN, first of all, is the way that you connect to Dubnode. Um, once you connect to Dubnode, even with your laptop or your phone, you connect to the internal network of Docker, and then you can reach uh, any service that it's running inside. Uh, bind, well, bind is the name for the container that is, which is resolving the domains. So for example, if we have a decentralized domain like .eth, and Bind is the, rep the responsible of giving you the internal IP and then giving you the, the for example, the centralized uh, website or whatever. Add chain is basically uh, parity running, and we don't we it is this is the main chain of Ethereum, and we have two modes of running it, like archive node or normal, like fast chain mode. And we use it also for internally for the ENS resolution because we use ENS domains to resolve our packages, which at the same time are um, are smart contracts. So this is the IPFS part. This is where we store all the, the load data, like package images, all the manifests, also images, and everything is stored in IPFS in a decentralized way. And eighth forward is another component which is responsible of giving you mm, decentralized websites. So if you have, a, for example, a website called decentral.eth, uh, this will be the package responsible of giving you the content. It's okay so far? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, okay. And silence. Okay, no, so. Next one is the DAM manager. This is like one of the core components we develop. And this is one of the parts where we put most effort. And it's what it's giving all the package management and also installing the packages, uh, in, um, uninstalling it, and also associating IPs, domains, most of the almost of the things uh, that are running in the background are so actually done by the DAM manager. And admin is the front end, which is the 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 front end you can see here, and it's the way you can interact with DAM node and install the application you want. And WAMP is it's an internal component that it's responsible of uh, handling the package communications internally. And for example, it gives uh, admin rights to the admin users and also normal rights to users that, for example, should not be able to install 
core packages or touching parts of the system. And it's also everything like based on JavaScript. So this is a, well, this is a screenshot a little bit old of how the, the installer looks, but you can just with a few clicks select one of those packages and install it and it will be running in seconds. Uh, now I want to talk the, of the SDK is a command line tool that um, is the purpose is to make it easy to um, to actually create new packages. So we are not the only ones creating packages for Damno. And here I'm showing um, a JSON file, which is an example of uh, one of the manifests, which is all the metadata that describes uh, one package of, of Damno. Here you have like uh, the name, the version, the IPFS address of the avatar, also the, the path of the image that will be installed, and also some parameters. We we give the users the, um, the freedom to configure a little bit the packages, so but we want to have a balance between you know ease of use, but also um, freedom and customization. So they can set uh, those variables. I will show you later. Yeah. So this is the first part. It's just the you know the slides, the presentation. Okay. And, and now I'm going to show you one of the dumb nodes I have running. This dumb node is running in Berlin. And here you can see the dashboard. I'm right now I have uh, three blockchains synchronizing Bitcoin, the mainnet, which is parity and Gorli, which mm, three, three of them are synchronized right now. Here you can set up um, devices for, for yourself or your friends or other people if you want to share it. So, and you can also set up if they are admin, admin rights or not. If you have any question, just go ahead. This is the last version of the installer. As you can see, we have Raiden, Cosmos, Raiden Testnet. I have this one installed. Swarm, Lightning, where well, there's some, there are many, and we plan to add many more. And we try to maintain the versions up to date as much as we can. Sometimes it's a bit hard to, to keep things uh, you know, updated to the last version, but I think we are doing quite well. And this is the package list. This is packages that I installed myself. And here you can see the core packages of Damnode and you can tweak many things. For example, not this one, but the chain. You can restart it, configure add extra options to, to the binary, which is launching. And we also offer like a Wi-Fi hotspot. So instead of the VPN, you can connect to the Wi-Fi and then you get transparently all the services uh, in, in, in your phone or, or your laptop. This is like um, the SDK tab, which help you, helps you to publish a package, but it's a bit, the process is a bit long, so I, I won't go through the SDK right now. And well, here we have like reports, activity, um, information on if everything is going, uh, it's not going okay, then you will, you will have it here, like a, a next mark or something. We also offer um, a dynamic uh, DNS domain, so you can easily connect to your dumb node through this, uh, through this domain. And yeah, I mean, that's it. That's all I can show for now. If you have any question about it or. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I actually have a question to sort of start off. So yeah. um, the uh, the first question I would have, so I, I saw like the packages that you have mm -hmm. um, running on the dev node. 
Um, yeah. uh, so you have the ability to run things like uh, 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 a node for uh, the different uh, Ethereum chains, or or mm -hmm. it looked like yeah. you had a Bitcoin one going as well. Um, it's, it, what other? I mean, are are there smaller applications of it as well? I mean, can you run an IPFS node on it at the same time? Um, uh, IPFS or... is is running actually. It's one oh, of okay. the core. It's one of the core packages. So for us, it's like one one of the packages that for sure has to be running because we use it. So you can use the API of IPFS actually. Uh, it's being used by Dabnode, but you can use it yourself for your projects. So, for example, I can show you here in the IPFS tab. Mm -hmm. You can open the UI and you can see like the dashboard of IPFS, IPFS itself. And you can add files and see the bandwidth and all the stuff. And and so I'm assuming that if if you if you're if you've written uh, or are, are using a, a DAP that mm -hmm. um, uh, requires being able to deposit and retrieve data from IPFS, you can do that directly with your own DAP node. Yes, you can configure it and and say, hey, uh, point directly to IPFS .dap node, and this will be the IPFS endpoint. In, instead of, for example, using Infura, you can use uh, your all the all the APIs that that uh, download is offering. Excellent. So, um, uh, at this point in time, uh, how many different uh, how many different packages are are available for DAPNode? Well, the official one I, I showed you already. Okay. Sometimes we have uh, packages that are not maintained anymore, and, and we remove them. These are the official ones. Okay. The ones you can see here, but. If you want to, you can build your own package and you can install it here with the, with the IPFS hash. So for example, uh, you can, uh, with SDK, the SDK will give you this hash. Uh -huh. And then instead of um, using our repo because it's maintained by us, you can develop your own packages and install it like, like this. Well, uh, right now it's not, Reaching right. this one because it's not existent, I think. But but, but so, it, the, the, I understand for, the concept. Ah, wait, no, no. What you have to put here is the IPFS hash of this uh, manifest itself. This is the image. But when yeah, you upload okay. this um, manifest, then you can see it. Then you can install it here. Excellent. The um, one, for example, one of the projects that are developing and maintaining their own DAP node package. Um, is Pocket Network. So mm -hmm. Pocket Network, they have um, a sort of like a, a relayer for for um, connecting clients to full nodes um, and to spread the loads on those full nodes. So you, you would have an application that would have integrated with the SDK of the Pocket Network and this way, you instead of pointing to Infura as most uh, Ethereum DApps do at this point, um, you would be pointing to um, a relayer service that Pocket Network runs in a decentralized way, and this relayer set of service will point to one of the Ethereum nodes that are affiliated to the Pocket Network. Yeah, so the Pocket Network then would ha will have, it's not ready yet, its own token, and they will distribute and incentivize the hosting of nodes, et cetera, et cetera. So, so the whole idea is to be able to have this whole infrastructure of servers that um, DAPs can access, uh, each individual can access and will be assigned a server, uh, much like we are using Amazon Web Services or cloud services now. Except um, in this case, it would be yeah, much more decentralized because it would be running on a yeah. system of DAP nodes rather than like a centralized yeah, sure. service. Correct. Exactly. That's the so, point. So that's so the they they developed the DAP node package because that's a really good way for them to to expand the the nodes, the people that are running nodes um, that will be part and be um, offering their nodes to to the pocket network. Um, uh, so they they're maintaining this, and in order to to get their uh, their package in Dapnode, we don't have it in our installer. Um, so you would have to in, enter here uh, 
pocket.network, uh, .public, uh, DAP node package, etc. Um, so you you put their address in the exactly thanks um, pocket network dot public dot nap dot dot uh, if um, and that would uh, if yeah. this one works so the same way yeah and uh, they would you would download their package yeah for example this yeah, one okay. is the public repo that's another so example we this have... one is go ahead go ahead which is not which is not blockchain related but you can put whatever you want if it's if you, if you can make a docker file of it it can run so okay so there's two types of packages that would be like the official tap node packages which which our team um have have done and then the public which are or like we consider community built which uh, they're not necessarily community because pocket network is for example a pretty serious uh, project um but, but you cannot find them in the installer. Why cannot you find them in the installer? Well, because we cannot, at this point, we haven't found a way to ensure that all the packages that, that will be put in the installer uh, will be safe and we will not mm -hmm. uh, compromise uh, your keys or something because when, when you have the Lightning Network or the Raiden, um, then you, you're actually storing value on key stores that are stored on your DAP node, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, you want any to, package would compromise that. Yeah, mm. we want to keep a bit of control on on what is uh, published there. But I understand. You, you, you always have the freedom to to do it on your own. Exactly, but we we're very very open open source. Um, we are fully on, on the centralization, and everybody should be able to like we're making this tool so everybody should be able to do their own packages and to distribute them. So. Um, even though we have not found a way, that's our goal, and and we're offering like anybody. If you have the address of the project of the package that you want, you can have it and you can use it without any problems. Excellent. Yeah, and actually, we plan to do workshops on how to use the SDK and, and events, so anyone can at least have some guidance on on how to do it. It's not quite hard, but. Um, do you do you have any of those like scheduled or planned already? Uh, for the Web three, I think yeah. We Correct. We Web three summit um, coming up now in Berlin Blockchain Week. I think we have um, so we're running a node at uh, the centralization and identity nodes, uh, which is this sort of like side event in within the premises of the Web three. Um, but organized by the community. So we're going to have two workshops, one on the centralized webs um, and how to access them through DabNode and another one on how to create your package. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, um, I would actually love to um, get a little bit of... Our sound isn't coming through, Chris. I see you talking, but I don't hear you. Oh. Hang on. Is, oh, it, is it working now? Can you not hear me? No, it's not coming. That is annoying. <laughs> um, yeah. Still not Chris. Okay. okay. <laughs> you like, can, yeah. Fuck it. Maybe you can write it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you're muted again, also. Oh, hey. Or Hi. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. So there's there's actually um, uh, a few things that you can do with that node straight up that are that are quite interesting. For example, um, you can you can point your MetaMask to to your own node. So when as as you know, MetaMask um, uh, is is sponsored and sort of owned by consensus and therefore they use Infura. Um, mm -hmm. So you're you're pointing when you use MetaMask, you're pointing to uh, a node that is owned by Infura, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, but it as it is becoming, um, it is a very hardcore centralizing factor on on the Ethereum ecosystem. Every DApp uses Infura. What happens if Infura goes down? What happens if if you can somehow compromise Infura? Um, yeah. Right. So also, um, yeah. Also, for example, the the IPFS IP, API sometimes it gives me errors because. What I'm trying to put there is too big, or they have uh, too much uh, traffic, or something. So yeah, 
yes. For me, it's been about three years. Uh, not so so is, you can use, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so what, what specific advantage is there to using MetaMask with your own DAP node rather than, uh, rather than just connecting to the, the main network the way they normally would? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say what, what um, Paul said already, because um, uh, I mean, it's a centralizing okay. factor, but apart from, from that, um, for example, it's... privacy. Okay. So you're not telling to Infira, okay, I'm connected from this IP and I'm using this address and I'm doing that and I'm doing this. You're putting this information on the blockchain anyway, but if you are not connecting to a third party, I think you could a little bit more privacy and also more control. Um, I, I just, uh, uh, the I think the, the question that I really meant to ask was, is there any type of a speed difference uh, between uh, how, how something will end up getting getting accepted by the miners into the chain using a DAP node than it would be the, than using mm -hmm. Infura or something to that effect? Or is there really no substantial difference at all? For IPFS, for me, it is. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I didn't have any difference, but okay, I'm not I'm, oh. uh, a hard user of uh, MetaMask. I use it sometimes, but as you can see, no, I not even have it here. Right, I see that. But, uh, <laughs> but actually, I have this application, which is connected to the node. No. But it's uh, it's lightning it's lightning network it's not uh, okay it's not uh, MetaMask I have it in Chrome but uh, not here right now but yeah I mean um, uh, so Chris... this this basically is um, so the reason why you would connect through MetaMask is to broadcast your transactions and and then so you you're using this this sort of light light client and then you connect to an actual node yeah um, mm -hmm. so all of these queries uh, if you needed to do something a bit more intensive um, because you are querying the blockchain or or you're just sending a lot of transactions because you're doing uh, tests on God knows what um, e by using a third party owned node, there they might have their own limitations on the on what they allow you to do with their node like how much traffic can you take yeah from i mean actu node. actually i think that infura for example is going to provide like um, premium accounts that's right so um, probably if you do like if you work a lot with uh, with the chain you will reach this limit and they will just mm -hmm. block you or so that what the reason why you would like like to interact directly with your own node is because then you can broadcast your own um, your own transactions, and that's not necessarily faster in terms of how the miners will accept um, your your transactions or not, because that depends on whether you're paying them more gas or or less. Um, but um, but you would you would not be capped on on the usage. You could you could continue to ping because the traffic will be. From from yourself to your own node, and nobody can control this traffic, and you you will be possibly the only one that's that's using that node to broadcast or to ping um, the transactions from there. Okay, Chris had a couple of questions here. Uh, he was he, he was uh, uh, wondering if there was uh, any more info on why we should all be running DAP nodes, um, and uh, he he also wanted to know what's in it for the people who are running a DAP node. Is there some type of financial incentive uh, in, if that has been, been answered before? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have uh, the Bibnode package, which is a package which aims uh, to provide incentives to the people who run nodes. But right now it's like in an alpha stage and it's not giving like real money, it's giving a testnet money. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have also Bibnodes and other ideas on how to how to incentivize it because for a lot of people it's like okay that uh, costs us a bit of money and yeah they, it's a um, bit of I, think, and, yeah. I think video has, has pointed to a very very important thing and it's why so what, why should people be running this um because that's that's gonna give them that's gonna give them money people running um this will will give them money so uh, going back to the vision 
of what we what we envision that node being, which is this the centralized the centralized infrastructure layer for the internet, where we're basically on the long term, we're basically trying to compete with all the cloud services, right? Where we've decided that um, this centralization offered by like a handful of companies are hosting a great majority of what happens in the internet right now. And that effectively brings you onto what what we can call an Amazon tax. So in order, if you want to host an application online, you will need to go and uh, pay Amazon to host your, your application. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, uh, cloud services are super, uh, super flexible. You need you have one more user, you want more capacity. You just like put a slider to one side. That's a great thing. Um, but effectively, all of this benefit, all of this profit of having, um, of hosting the infrastructure gets concentrated in a handful of companies. What we're trying to do is to decentralize all of these server farms, to put them all over the place. Um, I'm talking beyond blockchain right now. Blockchain would be the layer to, to <clears throat> transmit value on those, network, on those networks, but you could be transmitting computing power, you could be transmitting storage, you could be transmitting. What's important here is that the end goal or the end vision is to take off the monopoly of out of these big companies and bring it back to the people. We're sort of like a Robin Hood of the computing <laughs> power or of the data. Um, why should, if you can host a machine that runs on a protocol that, that you can offer space in your machine, why should Amazon keep all the profit of offering that, offering space online? If you want to offer some space, you should be able to offer that space and receive some incentive just like they do, um, just like Amazon charges for it, you should be able to receive some incentive for that and, and you should be able to get paid. So that's, I think that responds to, to both of your questions, Chris. Uh, so why we should all be running DAB nodes? Well, because it, if we believe in decentralization as a value um, and it's a value that protects us from censorship, it's a value that protects us from um, monopoly from uh, big parties unilaterally taking decisions that affect all uh, all our lives and how we interact online. Then, um, then we should all be running that notes. Uh, and I, I all, totally agree with you. <laughs> and because um, we're going to get paid a bit. Um, so here's uh, so if if I'm to understand, uh, wait. Uh, Chris is wondering if there's uh, timing on the mainnet version of that incentivization layer. Um, uh, one that is actually worth mentioning, we're, I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, okay. Because That's fair enough. The, the layer two, layer two actually, solutions like Raiden and, and, uh, and Lightning Network, do provide a, a limited amount of incentivization. Yeah, because um, of fees, but, but I mean, right. Maybe it won't cover the 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 money you put in, in you know electricity and so on. But maybe with beep note in the future, that would okay. be. A, a, mm -hmm. Actually, we wanted to to start a pool on mainnet, but it's not ready yet. But we we hope that it will be soon. Okay, um, uh, the next question um, is related to his second question, which is about uh, minimum system requirements or, or, or whatever in order to create your own uh, DAP nodes. But mm -hmm. I kind of want to preface it with a, with a second question there. If, uh, if you have uh, the main chain uh, Ethereum network uh, package set up on your DAP node, um, does it store a copy of the full chain? Um, and, and if so, uh, does, I mean, does that contribute to the amount of, uh, storage space that you, you're going to need? And I think that video might have disconnected. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, there you are. You're back. Excellent. <laughs> um, I can kind of repeat that question if, if you didn't hear. Um, in terms of disk space, if you are syncing, syncing the full chain, Depends if you want the full chain of the or the archive. The archive needs uh, more resources. 
mm -hmm. uh, like terabytes, but for a normal synchronization that will allow you to do like 95% of the things, I think it's enough to have like 250 gigabytes or, or 500 disk, like an, a normal SSD disk that you could buy nowadays. It's, it's enough. Okay. Um, uh, is, uh... So this isn't like doing mining. So uh, most of that isn't super processor intensive. So I'm assuming that you don't have to like get a, like an i9 or anything with like no, I mean, gigs with... of RAM or no, or no. I I did my tests um, for all the apps we run. Uh, I think that four gigs is is enough. Uh, okay, eight gigs it's better because in also, the synchronization of the chain, it's pretty CPU intensive. You can do it with any CPU. Maybe it will take a bit longer, but you don't need like uh, high end hardware. The nut nodes that we sell, some of them are like high end hardware and mm -hmm. more expensive, but you could run it on any Intel compatible um, machine, probably. Excellent. Um, so, does anyone else have any other questions at this point? Feel free to jump in there and ask. How did the, uh, while well, people think about questions, if they have any, um, now that uh, that video mentions Intel, um, I think it's, it's we're, what we're doing with Intel, like we, we just enabled uh, DAP nodes that are, um, so our DAP node software. Um, for for SGX. So if you have if you install that not in a machine that is Intel and that's SGX compatible, you can actually use um, SGX applications on your DAP node. Uh, SGX applications. So is is um, software guard extension. It's is um, it's basically a secure enclave that Intel uh, creates within their chips, and uh, that's going to be really big in terms of. Uh, the centralized computing because you can actually compute things in the secure enclave that um, you can be sure that no matter in in which part of the world they're happening even if it's like an, on a hostile uh, or assumed hostile environment like would be like a, my living room for example or because you don't know if it's me or just like, like a black hat hacker uh, you you could be um, ensuring that the computation that happenings within this enclave is is going to come back to you um, it's going it's going to be done distributedly and it's going to come back to you uh, safe uh, because it has happened in this in this enclave so that's a big deal um, and that's partly why we choose to provide uh, hardware that's a little bit more expensive than some other options, um, but but that have a lot more applications than, and that last a lot longer as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so um, this new paradigm of trusted computing that probably will give us more value in the future. But also, I mean, if you're, you're going to run a single node or something, maybe Something that's more is okay, but if you want to run all what tab nodes offers, I think that these Intel computers that we use it's a, it's a good choice because they last longer and so. On. Excellent. Um, I, I think uh, there was one more question. Um, how many how many people are currently working on Dap Node? Um, uh, do you, do you have do you have a how big is your team? We are three active developers. Um, also, Paul, uh, Alex, in the communication. So we are like five or six, right, Paul? Yeah, five. Five. Yeah, small team. And uh, eighty percent actually here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, there was a, a there was another random question. Um, do you have uh, some sort of a handle on the geographical spread of who's who is currently using DAP nodes? And uh, if if you do know, what country is winning? <laughs> uh, actually, because of the decentralized um, uh, approach that we have, we don't really have like uh, information on who is running DAP nodes from where okay. because that would be gathering data from a centralized point. So we are not doing a statistics on this. We can make some figures, 
that we don't we don't because on of the downloads we are selling, but we cannot tell how many people in each country it's running. That's okay. that's sort of by design as as well, because we 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 believe that um, most of our users value privacy quite a lot, um, and therefore we don't have any tracking uh, or any metrics that. That, that we can use to track our users. So unfortunately, when we sell hardware, we need to have an address to sell it. So, and, and we know how many hardwares we, we ship, and that's the only metric that we know. But also, uh, Dabnode is completely free and open source. So you can actually uh, download it and install it in your machine, and we will never know that you that you have installed it in your machine. Um, and you can, you can run it without any fear of uh, knowing that people uh, people know that you have Dabnode, etc. So, but by design, we we do not track uh, users. Excellent. That's that. That was an even better answer than having an answer. <laughs> uh, so that's that's kind of exciting. I mean, talking about the ones, talking about the ones we have sold, as as Paul was saying, we have to ship them over. I have the feeling that the U.S. are like very active ordering Dabnodes. U.S. and Germany, I think, are the two countries from which we have received more uh -huh. orders. But it's a very small sample, right? And and we are forced to know this. On the other, about the download of software, we only have like uh, in GitHub. There is a metric that is not invasive for people, because we, uh, as it's clear, we we don't want to do that. It's not that we are not doing it. It's like that we are not going to do it. But GitHub mm -hmm. like gives you a, like a, an amount of downloads, and now it's about 3k downloads of that node. That for sure a very small percentage of them will be active now. But it's like it's like the the metric to to take is the only metric about the spreadness about the the spreading of the Dabno software that that we have. Excellent. So um, uh, I I guess the the next question that I would have. Um, so you're able to install this on your own hardware that you already have, but I, I guess that you guys have uh, your own hardware solutions that you offer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, if if someone is uh, interested in uh, checking that out uh, or finding out more about uh, that node or or whatnot, is there a is there a site that uh, uh, I can point them to here? Yeah, I think I showed the sure. the slide. I'm sure. So you can go I'm to either dabnode.io. Yeah, dabnode.io would be on the website. Um, and um, if that stuff is not for you and you just want to run your own node because you want to support Ethereum or you want to support Bitcoin or Monero or you want to um, just connect directly your your MetaMask or your Jewel to 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 your own node, then um, without having to worry about how, how to install it, and etc. etc. Then shop.dabnode.io, and uh, you'll find our uh, our versions that we have for sale. This comes pre-installed, um, so it's basically it's it's literally plug and play. You would have to like when you would receive it, you plug it, um, it will turn on. And you connect to its Wi-Fi. It has a it has a Wi-Fi uh, antenna inside, and it creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot. So you connect the first time on this Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, you set it up as you want. You create a VPN so you can access from your phone. You can access it from your uh, from your laptop, from wherever you are in the world. Um, and and there we go. And you got your you got your DAP node running. Your node running. Um, and you can connect to it from anywhere. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so I guess I'll uh, 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 thank you for everything. Um, and if anybody has any last minute questions or anything to add at this point, this would be the time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also put the Dabnode Riot Room link here. So you guys. Yeah. Um, can, to join. Yeah. Um, uh, if you could post that uh, in the uh, social coding. Riot. Um, yeah. That would also be that would also be great. Absolutely. Um, um, alrighty, guys. Well, I want to thank you for for uh, coming out and doing this this morning. It's it, it was great to actually see this in in motion and, and, and working. I remember when this project got started. Um, so it's it's really great to see how how like a how far it's come and b how simple it is. 
to mm -hmm. uh, from from uh, an end user perspective. So, congratulations on a really awesome product. And, and uh, thank you, thank you for coming and showing it to right. us this morning. Uh, so, yeah, really for inviting. It. Yeah, and so uh, if uh, if any of you are interested in a little bit more of this, feel free to stop by the uh, uh, stop by social coding, um, and there you'll be able to find a link to the Jeffnode Riot channel. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see, there's one last thing. Oh, perfect. Yes, you, it's uh, dapnode colon matrix dot org is the uh, is the dapnode channel. Um, <laughs> and and uh, you know, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks to you guys for inviting us. I see you. See you Have a very good one. <laughs>